Dear learner, welcome to this episode on Fundamentals of Air Travel. The subject of tourism is multidisciplinary. It involves study of management, arts, archaeology, ecology, transport and so on. The transport sector is considered as one of the important segment of tourism. It has a huge impact on the development and welfare of the population. In the later part of the 20th century, there was globalization of economic activities which resulted in rapid development of air networks. The transport geography was highly influenced by international tourism. Air transport plays a significant role in inter-regional movement of tourists, especially for long distance travel. Growth rate of international air traffic is thus closely related to international tourism. Thus, air transport is considered to be the most effective mode of transport. For economic and social development of any economy, air services play a significant role. This paper on air travel introduces you to fundamental aspects of air travel management. In this episode, we are going to learn about history of aviation, types of aviation, demand for air transport, airline geography and airlines. The first topic is history of aviation. The history of aviation has extended over more than 2000 years. Since Neolithic times, man had dreamt of flying with the birds. He tried to realize this dream through his earliest attempts in kites and gliders to powered heavier than air, supersonic and hypersonic flights. Kites were the first form of man-made flying objects. The mythology of several cultures also feature flying objects. Human ambition to fly is represented by the wings made out of wax and feathers by deodalism in Greek mythology or the Pushpaka Vimana of Ravana in Ramayana. The first successful flight is a result of centuries of studies and experiments. Blueprints of a flying machine were drawn by Leonardo da Vinci as early as 15th century. On November 21, 1783, the modern age of aviation began with untethered lighter than air air light in a hot air balloon designed by Montgolfier brothers. As balloons could travel only downwind, their practicality were limited. The need for a steerable, dirigible balloon was soon felt. First human powered dirigible was flown by Jean Pierre Blanker in the year 1784. He crossed the English Channel in 1785. In 1799, Sir George Ailey set forth the concept of modern airplane. While there are many competing claims for the earliest powered heavier than air flight, the most widely accepted date is December 17, 1903 by the Wright brothers. Wilbur and Orville Wright Thus, the first flight took place in Kildevil Hills near Kittyak, North Carolina. Orville they made the first successful flight. Although their air machine flew only for 12 seconds, the Wright brothers started a revolution that has greatly affected the entire world. The success of Wright brothers' flight started a revolution in the transport sector. Everyday flight has been made possible with renovations to the powered flight. When the first world war started, a decade later, heavier than air powered aircraft had become practical for reconnaissance, artillery spotting and even attacks against ground positions. 1920s and 1930s witnessed great advances in the field of aviation. By the time World War II started, Many towns and cities had built airports and there were numerous qualified pilots available. The world war also brought with it many innovations in the field of aviation and first jet aircraft won such innovation. 
especially in North America, after the World War II, there was a boom in general aviation, both private and commercial. Many inexpensive war transport and training aircraft became available and also thousands of pilots were released from military services. Light aircraft were provided for the new middle class market as manufacturers of aircraft such as Cessna, Piper, Beechcraft expanded their production. By the 1950s, the development of the civil jets grew. Since 1960s, composite airframes and quieter, more efficient engines have become available. Most important lasting innovations in the instrumentation and control had taken place. In 1970s, the outlook changed and air transport came to be increasingly seen at just another transport services. Understanding aviation. Aviation is economic in a sense because it correlates very closely to movements in the global, regional and local economy. Further, it is also related to society and the political environment like economics. Today, economic globalization and liberalization have a great impact on the air transport sector since it knits closely with gross domestic product GDP. Demand for air travel is determined by economic development. Aviation sector is dependent on various economic parameters to measure the growth of industry namely per capita income, personal disposable income, standard of living, price of crude oil and economic performance in its present state. Hence, aviation is a vital part of economics. To oversee the viable growth of the aviation sector, it is necessary to manage the sector. Aviation management is the art of conducting the aviation business through deploying and managing resources on a regular basis. Next is types of aviation. Aviation is a science, business or operations related to aircraft. Aviation can be broadly classified into three areas namely military aviation, commercial aviation, general aviation. First is military aviation. The first part of aviation is the military aviation. Military aviation refers to aircraft flown by the armed forces. Some of these advanced aircrafts have the capability of flying at three times the speed of sound. Next is commercial aviation. The second part of aviation refers to commercial aviation. Commercial aviation began in Germany in 1910. Commercial aircrafts provide public air transportation. Commercial aircraft may also carry cargo and mail. Commercial aviation is the most common type of aviation. Third part of aviation is the general aviation. General aviation means all civil aeronautics with the exception of commercial air transport operation. This includes sports flying, business flying and crop dusting. Although general aviation is frequently overlooked, it is a vital part of air traffic. Next is demand for air transport. The demand for air transport is based on various factors like GDP that is gross domestic product, rise in per capita income, increase in personal disposable income, improved standard of living, growth in international trade, falling real cost of air travel, relaxation of travel restriction, increasing leisure time and paid holidays, tourism promotion, air transport liberalization, low cost airlines, industrial production and foreign direct investments. Next is airline geography. The Greek word geos stand for world and geography is derived from this word which means study of the world. Thus, airline geography is the study of various cities, airports and nations served by airlines. 
Airline geography is based on the standards set by International Air Transport Association shortly called as IATA. You may be thinking as to what is IATA? Well, IATA is a non-political and voluntary association created in 1919 by six airlines to further the development of air transport. IATA areas of the world. IATA has divided the whole world into three areas or traffic conferences for the purpose of establishing fares and traffic related rules. The traffic conferences or areas are TC1 that includes North America, Central America, Caribbean area and South America. Europe, Africa and Middle East including Iran that comes under TC2. TC3 includes Asia, Australia and South Pacific Islands. IATS traffic conferences or areas are not necessarily the same as continents. For the purpose of fair construction, countries located in one continent may be classified in another area. For example, Asia is included in TC3 but Iran is included in TC2. Codes used in air travel. City codes and airport codes. It is important for the tourism professionals to know information about city, airport and currency. Apart from TC areas of the world, the location of destinations and local time calculations in order to facilitate preparation of itineraries and booking of tickets. A three letter ISO code is given to each city having an airport. These are universal codes used throughout the world for the purpose of airfare calculation, booking tickets, itinerary and planning etc. For example, DEL is the code for New Delhi and NYC is the code for in case a city has more than one airport, then each airport is referred by a different code. For example, London has more than one airport. Heathrow Airport at London is coded as LHR while Gatwick Airport at London is coded as LGW. These codes are also used on luggage tags and helps baggage handlers at the airport to load the baggage onto the correct flight. Next is airline codes. Similar to the city codes and airport codes, each airline has a unique identifying code. IATA has assigned two letter alpha codes for the airlines of the world. These are also called carrier code. These codes are recognized throughout aviation and other related industries. These are standard codes. For example, Air India's code is AI, while Indian Airlines code is IC. Lufthansa's code is LH. Next is countries code. IATA has given two character code for each country of the world. These are standard codes which are recognized throughout the world. Next is freedoms of the air. Air transportation is different to most other forms of commerce not only because of its international components but also for its government participation and fact that many national airlines or flag carriers are either in large part government owned or even if not are felt by the government to reflect the prestige of their nation. International air travel has long been subjected to all manners of complications, restrictions and bilateral treaties between nations. One of the main treaties that sets out the fundamental building blocks of air transportation regulations is the Chicago Convention in 1944. These building blocks are widely referred to as freedoms of air and they are fundamental to the root network we have today. There are five basic freedoms that are more or less recognized by all other countries. First freedom, 
the right to overfly a country without landing. Second freedom is the right to stop in a country on the way to another for refueling or maintenance without transferring passengers and cargo. Third freedom is the right to carry passengers or cargo from one's own country to another. Fourth freedom is the right to carry passengers and cargo from another country to one's own country. Fifth freedom is the right to carry passengers from one's own country to a second country and from that country to a third country. Next topic is airlines. Today, airlines have revolutionized the way people travel. They provide operational services towards traveling and freight to the customers. Any airline can form alliance or partnership with other airlines for mutual benefit. Airlines may also lease or own their aircrafts to provide travel or cargo services to the customers. Generally, airline companies must possess a valid air opening certificate or license in order to be recognized. Aviation body of government usually issues operating certificate or license to the airlines. Airlines vary with regard to number of aircraft they own. An airline may own a single aircraft which carries mail and cargo while the other airline may own hundreds of aircrafts offering full international services. Airline services may be intercontinental, domestic, regional or international. They may operate as scheduled airlines or as charters. Scheduled airlines and charters. Scheduled airlines operate on a regular basis in accordance with a published timetable. Charters are non-scheduled flight operated according to the national laws and regulations of the country being served. Features of commercial airplanes. Today, there are a number of commercial airplanes available in travel which have their own distinct features. The usage of a type of aircraft depends on what it will transport, the amount of traffic, the capabilities of airports serviced as well as implied distances. Depending on the usage of commercial airplanes in regional, domestic or international market, their features also vary. This table shows types of commercial airplanes and their seating capacity. Pre-1985 models were mainly characterized by high capacity. There were attempts to replace low capacity and low performance models. 747 and DC-10 were mainly built for intercontinental flights. Although Boeing continues to provide high capacity planes, Main post-1985 models have a lower capacity but increased fuel efficiency. Broadly, there are two types of aircraft in civil aviation. They are narrow body aircraft and wide body aircraft. Coming to the differences between narrow body and wide body aircrafts. Narrow body aircrafts are smaller in size wide body aircrafts are bigger in size. Narrow body aircrafts have single axle, while wide body aircrafts have two axles. Narrow body aircrafts carry cargo in lower deck or cargo hold or baggage compartment, while wide body aircrafts are equipped to carry cargo by unit load device. In narrow body aircraft, loading is done manually, while wide body aircraft loading is done by high lifts and deck floors. Example for narrow body aircrafts, ATR 500 bar 42. Example for wide body aircraft, Boeing 747, Airbus 300, Airbus 310, Dreamliner Boeing 787. Next is travel classes. A travel class is a quality of accommodation on public transport. The accommodation could be a seat or a cabin 
airlines traditionally have three travel classes. Although many airlines are eliminating first class from international flights and now offer business class as the highest level of service. The following are the travel classes available in airlines. The first one is the first class. Generally the most expensive and most comfortable accommodations are available here. Codes are F that means full fare first class, P that stands for first class, A for first class discounted, R for first class suits. It is currently operating only in A380 aeroplane and formerly supersonic. A lower case N after any class code indicates night service. Next is business class. It is highly quality and generally purchased by business travelers. Codes are C, J. It means full fare business class. D, I, Z. That means business class discounted. Next is premium economy. It is slightly better economic class setting. Next is economy class. It, it has basic accommodations commonly purchased by leisure travelers. The codes are Y, B that means full fare, M, H, N stands for standard fare, G, I, K, L, O, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X for special or discount fares. Next is era of open policies in air transport services. Open means unrestricted access by any carrier into sovereign territory of a country without any written agreement. Thus, theoretically, when the sites are open, any foreign airline can land any of its aircraft at any airport with no restrictions on frequency and seat capacity. However, in the interest of better discipline and regulation, an open sky policy translates as a de facto bilateral treaties to determine the aviation relations between two countries. Experience has shown that open sky policies, both cargo and passenger, lead to expanded growth for international aviation services, creating new business for international air carriers. This results in increased travel and trade, productivity, high quality, job opportunities and economic growth. Open sky agreements provide maximum operational flexibility for alliance partners and also facilitate code sharing and other cooperative relationship between carriers. Thus, open sky policies are successful because they have gone hand in hand with airline globalization. The last part is conclusion. Air transport is one of the important segments of tourism. It plays an important role in international tourism. The dream of man to fly high in the air was realized in the year 1903 when the Wright brothers invented the aeroplane. From there onwards, technological advancements have contributed greatly for the growth of development of air transport. Today, a number of airlines are servicing air transport industry. Thank you.